In this tutorial, we learn how to produce the audio files that deliver pristine Dolby Audio in your HLS content. We'll start with a look at the preferred input formats, discuss what loudness is and why it's important, and detail how to produce all the files in the Adobe Media Encoder. Here's a list of other products you can use to output Dolby Audio. Most have similar encoding parameters, so if you don't have Adobe Media Encoder, you still should be able to follow along. Note that if you receive both stereo and surround source files for your content, a common practice for studio content, for example, you should use the surround source to create the surround outputs and the stereo source to create the stereo outputs. In this case, we're starting with 5.1 surround only, which we'll use to produce the surround and stereo outputs. If you're starting with stereo, you should produce only Dolby Digital Plus and AAC stereo output. Let's briefly identify the outputs we'll produce for each of the three languages we'll be working with, all from the 5.1 source. First, we'll produce Dolby Digital Plus 5.1 surround output. Then we'll produce Dolby Digital 5.1 surround output for older legacy devices, but that's optional. Then we'll produce Dolby Digital Plus stereo for devices that can play it natively. And finally, AAC stereo for devices without Dolby playback. Though we won't show this here, we'll produce in English, Spanish, and Chinese to show you how to handle multiple languages in our next lesson. When working with multi-channel audio files, it's important to verify that you input the channels in the proper order for the encoder. It should follow this channel to track layout. Here are the tracks in Audition. Here are the left and right tracks, followed by the center track that usually contains most of the dialogue or narration. Here's the track for low frequency effects, and here's left surround and right surround. Though you can export your compressed audio files from Audition, most producers export a 5.1 surround sound WAV file containing all their tracks and encode that in Adobe Media Encoder. This makes it easy to set up batch processing for all of your encoded files. Or you might even receive 5.1 surround WAV files and possibly stereo as well from your content provider. To cover all of these alternatives, let's export to a WAV file and encode in the Adobe Media Encoder. To export your session into a 5.1 channel WAV file, choose File, Export, Multitrack Mixdown, Entire Session. In the Format drop-down list, choose WAV PCM. Then name your file and choose the output location. And choose Master 5.1 as your mixdown option. Then press OK to save the file. Now that we have our standalone file, let's look at the loudness control. Briefly, large variations in volume levels between programs are a major source of user complaints. To address this, Dolby Audio measures the loudness of the content and automatically adjusts the playback level so listeners don't need to ride the volume knob. From a workflow perspective, you measure loudness with a tool like the Dolby Professional Loudness Measurement Solution, prioritizing loudness of the dialog whenever present and then you insert that value into the encoding dialog, as we'll show you below. There are a number of tools you can use to measure loudness, including those shown here. Here's how you measure loudness with the Dolby Professional Loudness Measurement Solution. When measuring loudness, Dolby recommends using the ITU-R BS 1770-2 or dash 3 algorithm with dialog intelligence enabled. By way of background, dialog intelligence ensures that speech content is measured. Also set the speech threshold to 20% and disable DC and pre-emphasis filters. After loading the file, I'll push run to start the measurement. Here the tool reports a dial norm of minus 19, which is the value we'll plug into the Adobe Media Encoder in a moment. Now that we have our loudness measurement, let's encode our outputs. Start by loading the WAV file into the Adobe Media Encoder as normal. AME will apply your default preset. Change the format to H.264 if necessary, then open the preset. Click the Export Video checkbox to deselect it because we're only exporting audio in these cases. Then click the Audio tab. Let's start with our Dolby Digital Plus 5.1 surround sound file at the recommended data rate of 192 kilobits per second. In the Audio Format settings, choose Dolby Digital. In the Basic Audio settings, choose the Dolby Digital Plus audio codec. In the bitrate settings, choose 192 kilobits per second. In the configuration settings, choose the 3 2 channel configuration, enable LFE, 
and insert the dialog normalization value we measured a few moments ago. In the Bitstream Information settings, choose Complete Main. If desired, click the Copyright checkbox to indicate that the audio is copyrighted, and click the Original Bitstream checkbox if the audio is a master. When working with 5.1 surround sound, Dolby Digital Surround EX mode should be disabled. In the Downmix metadata settings, ProLogic 2 Downmix is generally the right default choice, and leave the rest of the controls at minus 3 dB. In the preprocessing settings, make sure the DC high pass filter is checked, that the LFE low pass filter is checked, that the 90 degree phase shift is checked, and that the 3B attenuation is not checked. In the dynamic range control settings, use film standard unless you have specific information from the content creator to use a different profile. The audio production information settings are for a mastering engineer or post facility. You can ignore them and leave them at their default settings. If you'd like, you can create a preset by clicking Save Preset. I'll call this one Dolby Digital Plus 5.1 Surround 192 kilobits per second, and then click OK to save the preset. Make sure the file name and target location are correct, and press OK to create the audio file. The new preset will be available in the User Presets and Groups section of the Preset Browser. Now let's produce the optional Dolby Digital 5.1 Surround output, which is very similar. You can skip this section if you do not need to create Dolby Digital AC3 in codes. The easiest way to get started is to right-click the encoding you just created and choose Duplicate. Then click the preset to open it up. I'll go through all the settings quickly from top to bottom. In the Audio Format settings, choose Dolby Digital. In the Basic Audio settings, choose the Dolby Digital Audio Codec. In the Bitrate settings, choose 384 kilobits per second. In the Configuration settings, choose the 3-2 channel configuration, enable LFE, and insert the dialog normalization value we measured a few minutes ago. In the Bitstream Information settings, choose Complete Main. If desired, click the Copyright checkbox to indicate that the audio is copyrighted, and click the original Bitstream checkbox if the audio is a master. When working with 5.1 sound, the Dolby Digital Surround EX mode should be disabled. In the Downmix metadata settings, ProLogic Downmix is generally the right default choice and set the rest of the controls at minus 3 dB. In the pre-processing settings, make sure the DC high pass filter is checked, that the LFE low pass filter is checked, that the 90 degree phase shift is checked, and that the 3D attenuation is not checked. In the dynamic range control settings, use film standard unless you have specific information from the content creator to use a different profile. Again, you can ignore these settings. Let's create another preset for these settings, called Dolby Digital 5.1 Surround 384 kilobits per second. Click OK to save the preset. Make sure the file name and target location are correct, and click OK to save the preset and return to the Adobe Media Encoder main interface. Now let's produce the Dolby Digital Plus Stereo output. Again, if you had stereo sound from your content provider, you would use that as the source. In our example here, we will need Adobe Media Encoder to downmix the 5.1 surround tracks to stereo for us. Let's duplicate the preset and then click to open it. In the audio format settings, choose Dolby Digital. Let's skip down to the configuration settings where you need to choose the 2 0 left right settings to downmix the surround audio to stereo. LFE will be grayed out and insert the dialog normalization value we measured a few minutes ago. In the basic audio settings, choose the Dolby Digital Plus audio codec, and we see that the channels is set to 2. In the bitrate settings, choose 128 kilobits per second. We could go lower, but this will simplify creating our master playlists. You'll see why in the next tutorial. In the bitstream settings, choose Complete Main. If desired, click the copyright checkbox to indicate that the audio is copyrighted, and click the original bitstream checkbox if the audio is a master. You should enable Dolby Surround Sound if the stereo source is Dolby Surround encoded, as it is here. If the stereo source is a pure stereo downmix, it should be set to disabled. In the preprocessing settings, make sure the DC high pass filter is checked, 
In the dynamic range control settings, use Film Standard unless you have specific information from the content creator to use a different profile. And again, leave these options at their default settings. Let's create another preset for these settings called Dolby Digital Plus Stereo 128 kilobits per second. Click OK to save the preset. Make sure the file name and target location are correct. And press OK to save the preset and return to the Adobe Media Encoder main interface. Now let's finish up with our AAC stereo encode. Let's duplicate the preset and then click to open it. In the audio format settings, choose AAC. In the basic audio settings, make sure channels is set to stereo and audio quality high. Let's skip down to advanced settings and make sure the precedence is set to bitrate. Then back up to bitrate, which you should set at 128 kilobits per second. Let's create another preset for these settings called AAC Stereo 128 kilobits per second. Click OK to save the preset. Make sure the file name and target location are correct. And press OK to save the preset and return to the Adobe BD Encoder main interface. So now you've got your four encodings ready to go up here and your four presets down here ready for reuse for the Spanish and Chinese encodes. Now that we have the necessary audio tracks, we need to segment them and create the necessary playlist files. You'll learn how to do that in the next tutorial.